Welcome back to The Maths Guy everybody. I am Matt The Maths Guy and today we're looking at a new video, adding fractions with the same denominator. Let's go. Okay, so adding fractions with the same denominator. This is very different to adding fractions with different denominators, which is going to be our next lesson. But today we're looking at the same denominator. So you can see in our four questions here, all of our denominators are the same. So in two-fifths and one-fifths, we have five as our denominator. In three-sixths, add one-sixth, we have six as our denominator. And in four-ninths and two-ninths, we have nine. Three-eighths and five-eighths, we have eight. Okay, so... Let's first jump into our understanding stage to understand how this works before we have a go at understanding the method. So let's have a look at this first one together. Super simple question, one half and one half. Well, we know that if we add one half to one half, we should get a whole. So let's try and get to one whole in this question. So first thing we might think of doing is we might try to add our numerator and our denominator. And this is the most common mistake I see. And let's see what happens if we do that. If I add my numerator, I'll get 1 add 1 equals 2. And if I add my denominators 2 and 2, I will equal 4. Well, if I now show that in my model again, 2 fourths or 2 quarters, well, is that now not just the same as what I had? 2 quarters would be 1 and 2 quarters. That looks very much like what I had before because 2 quarters simplified is one half. So what I'm saying here is one half add one half equals one half. Well that sounds very wrong doesn't it? How can one half and one half equal a half? So we can't do this. We can't add our numerator and our denominator. So we need another way. So let's look at it in a different way. And let's look at it with the bar models again. So I have two fifths and I'm adding one fifth. So in my first bar model, I can see I have one, two fifths. And in my second one, I have one fifth. So how many do I have all together? Well, I think I can answer my numerator. I have one, two, three. So I have three. But I have three what? Three what? Three dogs? Three tenths? What? Well, let's think about it in this way. If I have two elephants, add one elephant, I'm going to have three elephants. Let me draw an elephant for you. Look at that. Beautiful. I should be an artist. So my answer would be three elephants. So would it not make sense if I'm adding two fifths, add one fifth, that my answer would be three fifths? because that's what my fraction represents, fifths. I have one fifth, two fifths, and I'm adding a third fifth, so I have three fifths. Because remember, the denominator, the number at the bottom, is basically the name of the fraction. What fraction are we working in? Are we working in thirds, in fifths, in eighths? And that will not change if we add fractions together, because if I add two fifths to one fifths, I'm getting three fifths. So I keep the denominator the same when I add. I only add the numerator. So back to my questions. Two fifths add one fifths equals three fifths. And I'll give myself a nice tick. OK, question two. Three sixths add one sixth. Well, let's do it in our super quick method now. I know that I'm working with a sixth. I have a sixth here and a sixth here. So I know that my answer is going to also be in sixths. And how many sixths do I have? Well, I have three sixths add one sixth, which equals four sixths. Let's check it with my bar model. Here we go. I'm just going to draw a very rough one for us. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Excuse my inaccuracy. But on my first one, I have one, two, three. And in my second fraction, I only have one sixth. How many do I have altogether? I have one, two, three four sixths. So my answer to question two, three sixths add one sixth equals four sixths. But hold on, because I think we have a simpler form of this fraction, because I can see here that four and six has a factor, has a, because I can see here that four and six has a common factor of two. So if I divide four by two, I'll equal two, and then six divided by 2 is 3. 
So my actual simplified answer is two thirds. Three sixths add one sixth equals two thirds. Give myself another tick. If you don't know how to simplify a fraction, I have a designated video for that on this channel, so check it out before you carry on too far with this. Okay, question three. Four ninths add two ninths. Here we go, and I'm just gonna do this in my super quick method now. So I'm adding ninths, so I have ninths, therefore my answer must be in ninths too. And I can simply add my two numerators together. Four add two equals six. Six ninths. And can any of you see a common factor between my six and nine? Well done, I have three. I can divide six by three, leaving me two. And I can divide nine by three, leaving me three. So four ninths plus two ninths equals two thirds. I can put that into my answer box and give myself another tick. Now, last question here is a little bit different. I have three eighths plus five eighths. Let's have a look at it. Three eighths plus five eighths. So same thing again. I'm working in eighths. Therefore, my denominator will still be an eight. And now I can just add my two numerators. Three add five equals eight. Hmm, eight eighths. Let's have a look what that looks like in our bar model. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I have the whole thing. So eight eighths actually equals one, or one whole. So the answer to three eighths plus five eighths actually equals one. Give myself a funky colored tick. Okay, so a few things to think about. When we add fractions with the same denominator, our denominator will stay the same because that's the fraction we're adding up in. We are adding fourths or fifths or thirds and we simply just add the numerator and then we simplify if possible. Okay, here are four questions for you to work on. Have a go at answering them and then put the four answers into the comment section and I will try and mark every single one. So press pause on the video now and I'll see you in a minute. Okay guys, well done today. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, please consider thinking about subscribing to the channel because we're gonna be making daily videos for you. And check out the website, www.themathsguide.com for even more videos and resources. But for now, see you in another video and peace out.